I think just to add what Jatin said is that under the Indian, Indian scenario, I think foreign direct investment, as what Jatin said, is not permitted in the nuclear energy. But they are permitted to be suppliers. They are permitted to be vendors. That's what Mr. Shinivasan said. So in a short run, obviously, that business will carry on and uh, subject to obviously certain open issues which we need to address. Uh, on the private sector side, I think uh, private participation is an, another issue. But the way the Atomic Energy Act is, uh, is structured, it does permit private participation. What it does is atomic energy, nuclear energy can be carried on by government companies. And the government companies are companies which are owned and controlled by government. So obviously up to 49% of private participation is possible. But what is not possible really is that means that the government has to directly own for 51% and the private sector has to own 49%. But what is not possible is the company like NTPC, which is a government company, and which company has a track record of uh, setting up power stations. Now, a, a, a NTPC cannot make a joint venture with another company, a private company, and invite 49%, because that's, that is a different company and that is not permitted. And I think that is definitely something which is in the realm of discussion. Uh, the, the Energy Act needs to be amended. And I think, as what Jatin rightly said, is a lot of capital, a lot of expertise is required to get to the gap. And this needs to be done. I actually, uh, I think one important issue which comes up in the short run, when we're talking about suppliers, we're talking about reactors, we're talking about technology transfer, is the nuclear liability regime. And I, I'll, read a, I'll read a quote from a, a, a magazine. Uh, and uh, obviously there are a lot of, uh, uh, it's a lot of emotional issues are involved in India and a lot of people think it's a misinformation which is the basis of this uh, report. But I think Bob, I'll read the uh, uh, quote from a magazine front line and I will ask you to react if you <laughs> What it actually talks about, it actually, the entire quote, and it's becoming a very interesting issue is that everybody wants a nuclear right liability regime, but the media is up in arms and uh, talking about it in a very negative way and saying that it's a sellout to the US, it's only required by the US companies, not required by any other company. And it says that this entire nuclear liability regime depicts the creator of the world's worst chemical accident as a victim and pledges legal protection for a possible nuclear Gopa. The CSC central objective is to limit liability solely to the operator and the jurisdiction to a single country, normally the one on whose territory the accident occurs. This is utterly irrational and violative of natural justice. I did want to say something about public-private, but maybe I'll do that second. So if I go to liability, then I'd like to back up a minute to public-private and the investment question, which is remarkably easier, I think. Um, the best, I can understand those words. I can understand those words being written. I don't in any way agree with them. I happen to sit next to a representative from Bhopal in one of the meetings we had in India when uh, the IBC, Ted Jones and company were kind enough to allow the Department of Energy to travel with And her emotion was palpable as she spoke about this, and so I'm not going to argue with that. I may have different opinions, but I'm not going to argue it. But I think when you look at the Convention on Supplementary Compensation, there's a couple things I think about. One is um, it allocates risk globally. It channels risk to the operator. It sets up, and I think this is where you have to go with rational people. It, it sets up a payment scheme where all countries that are part of that uh, regime are going to put funds in. And I think that the, God forbid anything happens, you know, we, this is a little bit of an aside, but something we brief very often now, very often in the nuclear arena, is an accident anywhere, is an accident everywhere. Nuclear is not quite on the cusp, but it's getting there. Of, of making a comeback, and there's all kinds of reasons for that, uh, from, the, from the climate to security to uh, just creating decent jobs for quality people. 
But to do that, you do have to allocate the risk. I think we have two lawyers here, and they're both talking about risk. So when I look at the CSC, I see it as uh, a very rational uh, approach to an industry that's becoming global. All nuclear commerce is global. All of us play. I think it was the Babcock and Wilcox guy when we were in India. This very subject came up, uh, not in the meeting with the, with the Congress people, but, but the, uh, he made the point, and I thought it was an incredibly good point. India has industry, too. India is going to want to step, step up globally. You have private industry. <coughs> you guys, you, you, know, you, you represent private industry. That private industry needs some protection. It's easy if you're connected with the government. <coughs> easier, not easy, easier. This, this regime recognizes global commerce, uh, recognizes that uh, the private capitalistic way probably is the way to go at this. Of course, I believe that. I'm American. And, uh, you know, so the argument I would have on that quote and on that kind of, of, of uh, reporting has to be very rational. It has to be taken on point by point and just lay out exactly what the regime does how it works, how the compensation works. Because as I understand it on this issue, if it's done right, and God forbid there's any reason to do this, but the actual people who have the might be affected, it might be a much smoother, quicker time to doing the compensation that is justified for whatever the event was. Uh, and again, a lot of awfully good minds are going into how to prevent anything. A lot of very, very smart people that I have a treat, a treat of working with every day. Some of, I have some colleagues out here that they may want to get at this, but that's what I would say about CSC, uh, and that's how I would go at it were I asked to re, you know, not rebut, but put in context that kind of uh, reporting. Back to public-private for a moment. Um, just yesterday I had, I had the opportunity to sit and listen to uh, representatives from another country that are considering nuclear. And they laid out their plan. It's a very different country, very different country. Uh, but they're going at it differently than India, very, very differently. They are looking at it, of course they have resource issues, but they're looking at it and saying, we may go with a strategic investor. We recognize that if we go with a strategic investor to build this facility in our country, that we may have to give up some choice. I'll just throw this out. You give up some choice. And the gentleman that was leading, the development gentleman from, from this team, said, uh, including choice of technology and including other kinds of choices. And the reason they were doing that, they were giving up, they're considering, they're giving up anything, but they're considering relinquishing some choice in order to get the funds. Uh, to have the power put in place. For this country, it's huge. I mean, it's a, it's a huge issue because they either are going to do something uh, to replace the power that they have, or they're going to be importers, and big importers, because it's like 70%. So I just throw that out. I was in the, I noticed with my Indian colleagues when I was in India, they talked about this, this 5149, and essentially, you can be the pump guy. You can sell them the pump, but you may not be able to to sell them the unit because you know that's not how a Westinghouse or a GE, uh, uh, Tachi, and so on are going to operate. But I would, I would, I think there's another path there, and I think it has to be considered, especially if you want speed. If you really want to implement your strategic plan for like what is it, 30 gigawatts in 10 years? I mean, some amazing amount, probably more than that. It's a, it's an amazing amount of power India wants to add. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get there with state resources. I think you're going to have to open up. I think I'm Indian, or I also agree. But CSC, or whichever convention, whether it's a Vienna convention, whether it's a Paris convention, whether it's an internal regime like China, we need to have predictability of liability. 